Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto, Tire Rack, and Die Hard. Now for most, winter is the time to put away the two-wheeling toys and grab a little more shelter for the daily grind. But we recently caught up with a group of Rocon riders who, when the snow piles up, they defy convention and hit the trails for some muddy good fun. We're in Sanford, Maine at my friend Chip's house. It's a beautiful place where he's got a horse farm and a lot of property with creeks and drainages and woods to ride through. Our farm here is 128 acres. It's typical Maine woodlands, rolling hills, some elevation change, and we have rocks. I mean, Maine is really good at growing rocks. The deal breaker, though, is the snow. This is Chip's place. Uh, he's the host. Uh, we're in his machine shop, an active machine shop that he uses for business. He's been having these rides up here for uh, 43 years, I think. I don't use brakes normally because I don't get going fast enough. <laughs> it's been a long winter, and I think everybody has an extra dose of cabin fever. So it's like, just give us a good day. We want to get out and go do something. When I saw the weather report, I was like, oh boy, here we go. We've done all this work and nobody's gonna show up. It's a roll of the dice whenever you do something like this. You don't know what you're gonna get. On a normal ride, we lucky if we have 15 bikes. Hey, Tom. Hey, Chip, hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming over. Oh, that's the guys from New Jersey. Hello. How you guys doing? Chip's ride attracted uh, actually more riders than we had at the Behind the Barn ride. Hey, Spike, how you doing? There was a lot of the local guys that I never knew or communicated with, and they all brought plenty of bikes for uh, guys that flew in, and everyone had a bike to ride. Wow, that is beautiful. Isn't that nice? That is very nice. Pretty impressed with the turnout. All of the bikes that were here, 40 odd bikes, no two of them were the same. It was more than I expected, honestly. I thought it was huge, really. Saturday will be interesting. I think it will be bigger than ever. Now, the guys from Rhode Island's bringing six or seven bikes, he says. If you have six or seven bikes, a pretty good chance you can ride one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so where are we going to ride? We have a bunch of trails as an established trail loop. We're going to work a stream crossing into the loop, ride down the stream for short ways. When the conditions present itself, the snow riding is the best riding. It was loose on top, slushy on the bottom. We call it corn snow. There's no, there's no forward bite at all. It's like riding on BBs. We ride more Rokons in the wintertime here than we do in the summertime. It's not a fair weather sport. You know, everybody rides these things in all kinds of conditions. That's what the bikes are for. A bunch of our riding has been to this creek that's behind me right now. As Chip would say, it's wicked bony. I learned that, that's lingo. That means it has a lot of rocks. There's a lot of them and they're very hard. Bob shows up, of course, these guys all arrived on planes, so they're dependent on bikes to ride. So Bob grabs my two-stroke bike. Chip said, ride it like it's my own. I don't know, he's seen how I treat my own stuff, so he knew what was gonna happen. I start out slow and try to be kind to his bike. But after a while, it just gets a little more rough. We got to a crick crossing, and it was kind of steep on the far side. And I was trying not to get my feet wet, and uh, started through the crick, and everything was going all right, and got to the far side. And the front wheel came up and kept coming up and up, and I knew I wasn't going to hold on to it. I just tossed it to the side. And... Sorry, Chip. Uh, you know, you might not treat the rental like you treat your own stuff. Right on, <laughs> oh, I expected that. That was, yeah. I actually thought it was kind of mild. I think I thought he kind of sallied out because it came back in one piece.
We didn't have a lot of big, tall hills to climb here, but we did have uh, a lot of fun in the, in the creek. Black Labs and Rokons and Riders are all attracted to creeks. Yes, we do come across brooks where we do have to get across and that, and sometimes we do find deep spots. I do have a snorkel set up, so a lot of times I'm usually the first one that they send across to find out how deep it is. You just know if you get in the water like that, don't look to your left. Keep your head turned the other way. Because you look to the left, you're going to have dirty eyes. I have tried some pretty dumb stuff out there, and people shouldn't do some of the stuff that I do with them. You know, Rokon romps and Rokon riding and Rokon riders are kind of unique in that there is a lemming effect that if one person tries something and fails, there's something that triggers in, in a rider's mind and they decide that they could probably do it better because the first guy was obviously stupid. So they're gonna go in there. And uh, usually that will attract like five or six of them in the same predicament. And that's always entertaining for the eight or 10 or the other ones that observe that. It was funny. Yeah, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And knowing that I was warm and dry and they were flailing around down there. I've done that enough that if I miss a day of punishment, I'm okay with that. The cool thing about the bikes is, is it attracts a certain type of character. When we started having the romps, I started to make a lot of friends. Like anything, you know, without friends and family, you really don't have a lot, you're by yourself. There's a bunch of other crazy people like me out there who like to show up at these romps and watch each other fall over and laugh and drink beer and, and eat and, and then go riding again. It's a great time. I can't even say it's really a hobby because it's really part of my life. I can't imagine a day without having a Rokon around. I really can't.